Good morning, guys. It's now um, 7.30 a.m. I woke up at 6, couldn't fall back asleep, so here I am. Uh, I'm going to be giving you some reviews today. Um, as you can see by the title, here's uh, my review of um, Season 6, Episode 4 of Game of Thrones. Now you're probably wondering, hey, where was our review of Episode 3? And um, I'm not, I'm not going to review Episode 3 because, first of all, I was in Israel during that time. And second of all, we felt it wasn't eventful enough to the point where um, it deserves like its own separate view. I might talk about it a little at the beginning here, but like I feel like it's a waste of time to go back and post a review that no one's going to watch now. If um, just from this ep that episode that I sort of missed, but um, only thing I wanted to mention was they're really shoving our Postelic J down our throat. That it would be a cruel sort of twisted fate if they didn't actually follow through on that but um we'll see from that flashback scene but other than that that's really all i'm going to talk about from episode three because all this stuff is directly continued in episode four so i thought i'd just jump right in with um that discussion because quite honestly this episode was very eventful there's a lot to talk about so without further ado, let's get to some of the topics. So this is sort of going to be out of order. It's not going to be the direct chronology of the episode, but because um, obviously it's very hard to remember the direct chronology, you just remember some points. So um, I'm going to go into that. I'm obviously saving the best for last, but other than that, it's completely out of order, I think. I don't remember exactly. It could be roughly the order, but who knows. So um, we forget the first true, like, nice reunion on the show. We get to see... Um, this episode had a lot of reunions, actually, which I'll talk about, but, um, so yeah, we got Sansa reuniting with Jon, we got, um, Marjorie reuniting with Loras, we got, um, we got, um, Dion reuniting with Yara, we got, um, Daenerys reuniting with, um, Jorah and Dario, so, a lot of reunions in this episode, it's a common theme, but, um, I'm gonna do keep going here so um Sansa finally reunites with Jon which is the first like sort of nice happy reunion on the show it was really nice to see them reunite finally the first Stark Jon reunite since they all left um since they all left Winterfell in early season one this is the first time they're truly reuniting think about all the shit that's happened to them think about everything they've been through in this time that they haven't been together but um and they finally get to reunite. So they're happy together, they're hanging out, and then they get a letter from Ramsey who explains that he has Rickon and that if you don't bring if you don't bring um Sansa back to Winterfell, we will destroy your we will destroy your everything you have. And um so so Jon Snow was tentative, but um, it's Sansa that actually decides this is what we need to do. We need to go back, take back Winterfell. She was actually talking about taking, retaking Winterfell before they even got this letter. So it was kind of like just a, an affirmation of her beliefs. And she was like, okay, so we need to go in there and take Winterfell. And Jon doesn't have really a strong forces. He doesn't have an army. So she says, we're going to, we're going to um, take the wildlings that owe their lives to you. And we're going to um, get the support of some northern houses that are still loyal to the Starks, and then we're going to go take Winterfell. However, what we see in a different area, we see in the Vale that um, Littlefinger realizes what's going on, sort of, and sort of brainwashes um, whatever that kid's name is into sort of giving the orders to help um, to help Sansa and have her. I don't know. So anyway, to sort of help Sansa and have in support her. So we got three large armies going up against are gonna go up against the Boltons and hopefully hopefully they retake Winterfell. We'll see. So we got um back in King's Land and we have the um High Sparrow reveals his backstory, sort of his origin story of how he became to be the High Sparrow to not all of it, but the beginning of it to Marjorie and it's a very similar story to Buddha, which I was kind of expecting, where he lives a life of sort of luxury and lavishness, and then realizes it's all for nothing, and sort of takes the journey, spiritual journey, gives up all his possessions in order to find true happiness. 
So it's very similar to the origin story of the Buddha and, and the Buddhist religion. So, um, yeah, but then he finally it allows um, Marjorie to see Loris, who's completely, like, destroyed, completely broken from the isolation. They're not being tortured in there, because that would be a sin itself. They're just being isolated from everyone. And he just begs them to stop. He doesn't care if he wins or loses. He just wants it to stop. Which brings um, me to the next point, in which, outside of the militant, outside of the faith place, we, got, we see that Cersei has, decides to put aside her differences with the Tyrells, to take down the Faith Militant once and for all, because even if she realizes it's her, and her, even though she hates Marjorie and hates the Queen of Thorns, she realizes that um, that if they don't unite, it's in her not in her best interest to not unite with them. So she decides, listen, this is what we're gonna do. We can't let Marjorie walk, take the walk of shame because she's the queen. So we're gonna before that she should even start walking. We're gonna go in there with our forces, um, and we're gonna we're gonna take them down. So, I'm really looking forward to that battle, see what's going to happen there. But um, finally, put the side differences and they're going to team up. And Tyrion and the East try to put aside his differences. I uh, like that connection there with the, um, the um, Masters of Slavery's Bay. And um, so he's trying to abolish slavery. And obviously that's not going to work. Because um, Daenerys came in, conquered, and abolished slavery. However, in her absence, slavery was reinstated because there's no there's no force strong enough to keep control after she leaves. So it's a power vacuum that's refilled by the slavers. So, um, so Tyrion sort of tries to ease them into it in a slow, calm way and say, "Okay, I'll give you seven years to abolish the practice." And in seven years. Who knows what could happen? Daenerys could have conquered Westeros and not even be caring about the East. Seven years is such a long time to the point where it might not be effective, but we'll see. We don't know. So we don't know where that plot line is going to go yet. Um, going back to the West, we see that... Um, so Osha has a plan. She wants to try to kill Ramsay. Obviously, it's going to fail. She's killed. First time we've seen her in a couple of seasons and she's already killed. I don't think we've seen her since season three. I don't, remind me if I've seen her in season four. I don't remember. She was not in season five, so she she's killed. <laughs> so she yeah, and he uses the same knife he killed her with to cut his apple and eat it. So he's disgusting. Um, so we have Ramsay's former prisoner Theon returning to the Iron Islands, revealing that he she was his sister was very pissed at him after the whole rescue mission that they did that failed. She's very upset at him, but he reveals he's not here to become king. He's not here to enter the king's mood. He wants to be a supporter of Yara, not a rival. So he decides he's going to loan his skills and effort to support Yara in the king's mood and not join the king's mood for himself because he does not want to be king. So um, finally, the best for last, we have Daenerys' scene, which was a little contrived, but I feel like it's worth it based on the like, just the scale and magnitude of the scene. So she's, um, she realizes, I'm not doing this shit. I have a plan. This plan technically could have been enacted without um, Jorah and Dario being there, unless what I think happened is Jorah and Dario like, um, covered the building in oil or alcohol beforehand, but that's just my theory. They may explain it next episode. I don't know. If they don't explain it, that's my headcanon. It's a little contrived, if not. But um, cause Daenerys can't manipulate fire. She can only withstand it. So unless she... Unless we figured out that she can now have the power to manipulate fire. We don't know. So she's sort of like a firebender. But we know that she can withstand fire any amount. Um, so she, since she has the Targaryen blood, blood of the dragon in her veins, so she can withstand the fire. So, um, yeah, so she's sitting there with all the po most prominent Kalazars, and they're talking about how they're going to treat like shit and everything, and she's not going to become... Um, She's not going to become one of the widows to stay in the house. She's going to be like treated like crap. And um, Sinaris is like, I don't think so. And pretty much burns them all to death. Crisp um, reemerges from the burning building naked, ready to um, convincing her, the people, uh, all of the members of their Kalazars, former Kalazars, to join her forces. So now she has the entire Dothraki people, it seems like, behind her, meaning that she's pretty much very close to being ready to take back Westeros. So 
all she has to do is deal with the slavery issue in Slaver's Bay. And maybe if if um, if they bring what's her name, the girl with the mask, back, maybe you go to a shy. Which um, if she ever goes to a shy, I don't know. But that might be a cool thing. I don't know if the show will ever do that, but the books seem like they're going to do that. I don't know. But um, anyway, so she has complete control of the Dothraki again, so she can combine her forces of the Unsullied and the Dothraki and take back Westeros sometime in the near future. So yeah, great episode, very strong. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, a lot happened, but it was great. So that's about it for this review. So thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.